At a time when all businesses are challenged by the coronavirus, clearly the property sector have a few challenges as well. And to talk to us about what's going on in the sector generally and his own company, Centuria, I've got the joint CEO of that company, Centuria, John McBain. Thanks for coming to the program, mate. Thanks, Peter. All right, John, let's just talk about the sector generally before we start looking at the specifics of what you guys are doing. How has the coronavirus affected uh, a sector that, when well, I've talked to you in the past, looked pretty well, particularly your company and companies like yours, looked fairly bulletproof as long as you had really good quality tenants. But the coronavirus has really thrown a few curveballs, hasn't it? Yeah, we, we, we all used to, for the last 15 years, we've all been walking around saying that it would have to be some sort of black swan event. And uh, we're, so certainly the swan, the swan arrived. You know, um, in terms of its impact on the industry, on the commercial um, and industrial real estate uh, funds management industry, you know, we're, it's, it's varied across the sectors. So some sectors are doing better than others. Yeah, and I guess, you know, in a, in a perfect world, if all your clients were government clients, it would be a lot easier being a landlord expecting a government to pay the rents, but the more private and more exposed they are, the tougher it is when it comes to the negotiation process, I guess. Yes, we, you know, I think... Um, you know, we're really only involved in three major sectors, um, healthcare, real estate, uh, commercial office, real estate, and industrial real estate. And probably of those three sectors, uh, the industrial and healthcare sectors, uh, they seem to be swimming along reasonably well so far. Um, yep. We would have more requests for uh, rental relief from our office portfolio. But I think working through those, um, I mean, the government has encouraged us to work with our tenants. Um, and that's what we've been trying to do. I think anyone who's a SME, a small, a small business, the, uh, the, the both the state or the federal legis uh, the state legislation has really instructed us that um, they've got to get relief. And part of that relief is a rent waiver. And part of that is, is um, you know, some sort of repayment plan. And I think to the to a great extent, most of those smaller tenants respond very well to us. And we are re we are pretty close to our tenants. We manage most of the properties ourselves, and we really have no problem with them. And it's pretty fair. Um, if you've got a coffee lounge in the bottom of a office block, and the guy can't open his his lounge, I mean, it, I think it, it would be unreasonable. Um, at the other end of the spectrum, we've got major, highly profitable companies attempting to uh, achieve some rent relief, and you know we don't, we don't, um, we don't think that's in the spirit of the legislation. Um, but they are very isolated cases. You have to look through this. This this COVID nineteen isn't going to be with us forever, but our tenant relationships have long leases. And our relationship with them is a, as a, an enduring relationship. So, we, you know, we have to be kind to each other. Yeah, and I guess the bottom line is we know that the implications for, let's, let's imagine the people who've gone into your types of uh, funds and your types of, types of properties, they've been looking for uh, returns that compare to term deposits or compare to dividends in, in listed companies. And we know dividends are going to be chopped. We know interest rates are going to be low. So therefore, people who have enjoyed success with you know, your products might just have to cop a little bit less than they've been used to because the coronavirus is a big curveball. Yeah, and no, we, we don't, uh, you know, in April, I think we collected 92% of the rent from our office portfolio. Um, and uh, so, but we do expect, you know, there are, they're very isolated pro properties that have gymnasiums and a slightly higher content of retail. So we don't really have any freestanding retail investments, but we do have uh, office blocks that might have a gymnasium and two or three shops in them. And, and I think uh, the attitude from our investors has been, well, you know, 
In fact, we've had quite a few emails from our investors making sure we're looking after those tenants. So it's been pretty quite a rewarding experience. I think that people are going to be pretty sensible um, in, in relation to how they treat it. Yeah. Uh, John, you've also uh, recently got involved in a, a New Zealand business, Augusta Capital. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I mean, Centuria Capital, the head company that um, that, that that runs the all of the real estate business, um, you know, we like to invest from time to time in other companies. And, you know, we, you and I have discussed New Zealand before, you know, we we believe it's pretty logical for us to expand our funds management business into New Zealand. You know, it's closer than Perth. Uh, not that we mind investing in Western Australia, but it's very easy to handle. It's got a very similar uh, legal and property infrastructure system. And um, we've been watching one company in particular over there, Augusta. Um, we, they're, they're raising capital at the moment, and uh, we've got about a 20% shareholding in them at the moment. I uh, hope it could be a little bit higher over the next few days as their equity raising continues. A really similar business to Centuria. So just a way to, to really um, get a stake in a business which is doing exactly what we're doing, but, but in New Zealand real estate. So we really like mm. the prospects. Once again, this is, invest, this is an investment that sees through COVID-19. Uh, you know, I'm very happy with our performance to date. Uh, on the headstock Centura Capital or CNI, uh, we didn't retract our FY20 uh, distribution guidance. It's, it's still firm. In fact, we reaffirmed it to the stock market uh, yesterday. So we'll still be distributing 9.7 cents as we said at the start of the year. Um, and I think it's because our business isn't so tightly wound or geared. Uh, and you've, you remember those management fees based on the value of the properties. We haven't lost any properties. So our management uh, streams you know, still pretty intact. Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting experience, uh, John, because you've had a, you have had a fantastic run. You have talked about black swans, but you've also emphasised the calibre of your tenants. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that uh, uh, works out. And, and, uh, and I guess the point you've made, and a lot of people might not have picked up on this, is that you don't have a big exposure to retail. Is that the area that's really going to be challenged in the REIT space over the next year or so? Well, I think um, in terms of immediate effects, I think retail, you know, and we, we know a lot of retail managers and they're professionals and, you know, we're, uh, we've got respect for them, high respect for them, but uh, um, it's just not an asset class that we've ever wanted to be exposed to. And I think certainly the, the uh, I think the whole A REIT sector has been damaged. Um, and I think it's because the markets react very quickly to things and the market's effectively saying, uh, we believe, you know, property values are going to plummet uh, forever. Um, that's just not a view we have. Um, we know that equity values have deteriorated and we understand that. And we think in the fullness of time, um, there will be some, um, you know, amelioration to property value, commercial property values. We, it would be naive not to expect that to occur but um, I think that's when as you said before the quality of your tenants uh, your relationship with them and the location and, and positioning of your buildings and the way you've managed them um, you know will be important yeah you now just before we go mate for people who are wondering I always see your business in two parts there may be three or four parts but one is the the headstock that that basically I guess, harvest the profits from the other parts of the business and people can invest in that on the stock market. But you also have, uh, over the years, effectively bought, built, become essentially part owners of those business and get rent along the way. And when you eventually sell the building, they share in the capital gain. Is there a new building or did you have a new building in your sites before the coronavirus? And if so, are you going ahead with it? We didn't actually. Funnily enough, we 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 just completed one one pro unlisted as an unlisted single asset syndicate, um, and we didn't have a contract that that spanned that distance. But I mean, I think looking forward to the future, you know, you know, we had a client ring us yesterday who who was rolling a turn deposit for uh, over a million dollars, and his bank offered him thirty basis points um, as a return or thirty five basis points. So his natural question to us was, well, have you got a syndicate with a building that we could invest some money in? 
So we are making offers on buildings at the moment. I think our unlisted property division um, will be one of the first uh, parts of the business that starts acquiring assets. Um, frankly, we're just not seeing cheap assets at the moment. Uh, where this current financial dislocation differs from some of the others is interest rates are particularly low and that's helping support uh, capitalization rates and keeping values firm. Um, you know, mm. uh, and it, 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 if there is going to be any softening of values, we haven't seen it yet. We predict a bit might occur. That's um, we're, we're revaluing things more frequently because we, it's important that we tell our investors what the value of their assets are. Um, and it's, I think, uh, look, a huge part of this is how long the virus is going to last for. Uh, there's a current there's a current trend to report that office uh, office accommodation won't be utilised and people are going to hand back their office. And I'm just doing an article with one of our people in the office. It's called um, uh, Conquering the World from Your Garage. You know, uh, frankly, uh, we've got 120 staff and they can't wait to get back into the office. Uh, I think we're all sick of being in our bedrooms. And what most people don't realise, Peter, is when they come back to work, we won't be able to sit down all our people in our office because it's social distancing. Until there's a vaccine or a quick test, um, I would say a maximum of 30 to 35 percent of our staff will be able to uh, be accommodated in our existing space, which flies right in the face of everyone handing their space back. So I think exactly. I think this is not going to play out. Uh, the populist way. I think people want to be in their offices. I must admit, over the years, John, I think the um, the one quote that has explained some of the extraordinary developments in business I've seen is, "Mate, what if the opposite happens?" And that's could easily be the case. Yeah. John McBain from Centuria Capital. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Peter.